Good morning, everybody. It is the most beautiful day. Wind, non-existent. And that makes me a very, very happy girl. We've got people behind me on top of the leg, working, fixing any leaks we had. Oh my goodness. Just wanna lay and soak up the sun. It is beautiful. Before I go any further, I wanted to introduce you guys to a brand new channel sponsor. So I just want to give you guys a quick introduction to the newest channel sponsor. Their names are Universal Motion Components or UMC. They design, engineer, and manufacture powertrain parts for pivots. And obviously, as you've seen in my summertime videos, Grit and I have quite a lot of those. So UMC supplies final drive gearboxes, center drives, and driveline couplers to pivot OEMs and aftermarket distributors worldwide. Um, I decided to work with them because they're a family owned and operated biz business for over 40 years. And clearly as a farmer, I also work in a family owned and operated company. I just have a lot of respect for companies that are run like that. Um, they are based in the United States and that's where they design everything. Since its beginning, UMC is focused specifically on center pivot powertrains and has introduced many products that have proved uh, pivot powertrains reliability and performance, which as a farmer, I really appreciate. UMC offers the widest range of gearboxes and center drives in the industry as well as industry best warranty. These guys have a powertrain solution for literally every pivot application out there. They also have really great customer service and have solutions for everybody. They are experts at recommending things for your pivots and they tailor solutions to each individual farmer. When it comes to product quality, field life, and the constant pursuit of improvement, UMC is the global leader. So to learn more about their company, I've got a link in the description. Um, I just really appreciate them supporting my channel. So go check them out. That is just a little about UMC and I'm very grateful and thankful for their support. Um, anyways, let's give you a little calving update. Calving has been delightful this year. So typically February and early March is when the worst weather in Nebraska occurs. Super windy, very cold, and usually really, really wet. However, we haven't gotten any moisture at all this winter. So it doesn't really feel like winter. Right now it's 50 degrees. Yeah, but it means that it's ideal calving conditions. So the feedlot, is super super dry and so we aren't having to be quite as attentive whereas if cows are laboring in say a blizzard you want someone on watch 24 7 rotating taking turns making sure that calves aren't on the ground freezing um but with the weather that's nice you can really just let them be wild animals hold on look at this let me tell you how you know a cow is calving so see all this group, the herd has moved over here. I think they're getting hungry. It's about time to be fed. Look at that cow in the corner. So she has moved herself into a corner away from the big group. I'm assuming she's having contractions or is maybe even calving literally as we speak and her tail is up, telltale signs. Obviously she's concerned way more with having her baby than she is eating. I don't want any of the moms to charge me, so I won't get too close. I made that mistake last year. I went to go pet a new calf and the mom charged me and pushed me up against a fence. New moms are very protective of their young, as they should be. Um, but anyways, this is where our little separated lot where we keep the moms and their new babies and all of the calves laying down, taking little naps, sunning themselves. It's adorable. The closest you'll get to petting a cow is when they are licking these little salt mineral blocks. They love these things. And it's always when I get the closest to touching them. <laughs> For the most part, we just try to stay out of the cow's way and let them be themselves. During calving season, especially, I mean, obviously we use these things 
year round, but calving season especially. So from February to March, we use these two pieces of equipment every single day, the skid steer and the defender. Um, this year, like I said, with the weather is kind of an anomaly because it's not, it's not cold outside. There's no snow. It's not wet. There's not a lot of moisture. However, during use years where it's really snowy, we use the Defender to pick up calves and I'll be riding back here and I'll hold a calf and then we'll use the Defender to take it up into the calving shed. And it's just great for like running around. And then the skid steer is what we use to clean out the lots and just keep them dry. Uh, but anyways, we use, we use these pieces of equipment a lot and we just got a new power washer. So here's our old one kind of crusty looking the heating element doesn't work on it anymore or it's just like works on and off we've had to fix the temperature gauge several times and here is our shiny new one and i have not used it yet and from what i've told if i'm not careful it'll blow me away so i'm i'm very excited to use it so i'm going to be cleaning off these two pieces of equipment with a brand new power washer I'm in my shop today and all the parts came in for the 460. So since Laura's not here to finish what she started, I'll be installing a front main seal and this water pump backing plate that one of you guys sent us in the PO box. So thank you. And looks like it should fit. So we'll get all this put back together so we can go back out to the field. So here's the backing plate, fits on there just like that, and that just reduces the area that the water can swirl around in. It just makes the water flow through there better, keeps the engine cooler. And a few things I'm looking for is I gotta get a good seal around the edge or else this thing will pour out water and probably overheat and destroy the engine. So I gotta make sure I got a good seal on that. The other thing we're replacing is the front main seal, which is right down in there, which is already leaking. And this is what the new one looks like. I have to be very careful to put this in because if I don't push it in correctly or evenly or crinkle it, it will probably leak even more. So I have to be very careful pushing this in around the crankshaft. Let's get to it. Timing cover pulled off, which the seal is in, and I will show you why we have to replace this. So the seal is bad, and you can see, now well, it's hard to see, but there's a little fold in there from improper installation. Come on, focus. There you can see it. That's what we're trying to avoid. So that's why it's crucial we get this thing in there properly. And then when we put the balancer back in, have proper lube on it so it doesn't fold the lip over. gasket installed do not follow my installation process that's not proper here you can better see the folds there's one and there's a really big one so good thing I changed this this was obviously leaking some oil so we got it back together 
You got the timing cover back in there and the water pump back in there. A little bit of silicone and we're good to go. Ready to go all summer. All right, now that the power washing is done and Grant's work is done, we and the Challenger are hitting the road again. And this time it is to Kentucky, new state. I've never been there before. And we're headed down to Louisville or Louisville as I'm told the locals pronounce it. Um, and we're going to the farm show there. And so I'm very excited. I'm hoping to meet up with Lots of my fan friends from the internet and fans and um, manufacturers, equipment dealers, maybe get some demos for you guys. Uh, anyway, so stay tuned because Grant and I are taking on Kentucky. I will say this is going to be a very quick trip. We only decided to go about an hour ago and it's five o'clock now, PM. And it's about a 12 hour drive to Louisville. So I don't know if we're gonna make it all the way there, Probably not. Probably find somewhere to stop along the way, um, but I'm very, very excited. This is gonna be a fun road trip. All right, so we have made it to the National Farm Machinery Show in Louisville, Kentucky, and we've been here for five minutes and already seen about 10 people that we know, which is really exciting to be able to drive 12 hours and uh, be with familiar people. So one of the reasons why I love farm shows. But we've spotted the first thing that Grant is going to add to his wish list. Okay, now, now don't look at this look right here all right so starting off we haven't been here for long but i can already tell you that this is bigger than any farm show i have ever been to seeing the fence booth here there is a ton of bins there's all sorts of companies watching a tractor pull. I have never been to one of these before and it's been super cool. Uh, there's a lot of really like pimped out looking tractors. It's super loud in here and really smoky but it's really fun. back for day two of the farm show and I must say as much as I enjoy meeting people who like watch the channel and stuff I think we're having just as much fun talking to the exhibitors once you've been to enough farm shows you start to realize that it's the same exhibitors that go to every single show and the people who work for the companies are the same and I think we're like making friends with them it's really fun <laughs> just like the last farm show Grant is still looking at skid steers that are don't tell him this, way too big and way too expensive, but we can dream. It's pretty cool. I like the door that goes up. Yeah. On the Bobcat that we have, the door folds like this. And so if like the attachment is raised any, you can't open the door to get out. So, you know, that's cool. I just wanna see the inside of the tractor, man, come on. So yes, while at farm shows, there's still lots of, you know, new tractors, new technology. There's still some homage to the classics. Good old Massey Ferguson. Everything is so shiny. We made it on top of the chief bin that was quite literally brought in in pieces and assembled in here. So we can get a bird's eye view of the place. This is awesome. Look at all the lights over here. This is awesome. Thanks, Chief. So it's not like a super big bin, but my heart is still like racing. 
Yeah, we're way up here. We're pretty high up here. It's so fun to see everybody walking around though. There's so many people here. Spotted. If you zoom in, there's Larson Farms. <laughs> Hi guys. For all of you uh, smaller scale farmers, if you know what I mean. This is adorable. This, this is so cool. I used to have a toy farm set up when I was a kid, and this was like the dream set up. Okay, do you see that huge John Deere tractor held up to the planter? Yeah, that's me over there. <laughs> this is so cute. Okay, this is kind of strange. But something that we have noticed is that there are mowers everywhere. In every building, every little wing we've been in, there's a different mower company. So I had no idea how many mower, how many mower companies are there? Like, there's I like mean, crazy. John Deere, so what is, yeah, anyways. How many mower companies are out there? Let me tell you guys about a feeling. Oh my goodness. Oh. Sitting down at a table with chairs to eat food. There's something about it. So these farm shows, so far we've walked, my goodness, well total we've probably walked about 10 miles in the two days that we've been here. So sitting down feels so good. Oh my goodness. All right, and that is a wrap on the National Farm Machinery Show in Louisville, Kentucky. It is pouring rain. This is the most moisture I've seen since summertime. My goodness, it's so rainy outside. Ooh. It's oh. pouring. We made it. We'll bring some of this rain back Oh home. my goodness, seriously. We just don't have any moisture in Nebraska. Ooh. What a fun time. We love coming to these things. It's so fun to see not only vendors and new technology and new implements and equipment, but I think the main reason we come to these things is to see fans. And we met so, so many people and also reconnected with a lot of our equipment friends and oh, ate some pretty good food. Thanks for hosting us, Kentucky. Yeah, or seriously. We need to come back and actually do Kentucky. Who did all, who did all we meet? We saw Larson's. We saw Eric and Duggo and Amy. Mm -hmm. We yeah. saw Gav Brian's farming videos. Brian's farming videos. Aaron Holbert. Aaron Holbert. Gavin Sport. Gavin Sport. Ethan Clark. Uh, who else did we meet? Oh, uh, farming fixing fabricating. Yep, exactly. We met Shark Farmer. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so all sorts people. of people. There's probably a few we're forgetting. So yeah. But thank you to everyone who said hi, I got a picture with, thanks to all the awesome vendors. This was a great time. And we're still run are we still running the discount code? And we are still running the discount code, yep. 10% off if you use code FARMSHOW, and that's running until February 19th. And uh, do I still get all the proceeds from that? From and the military truck? Grant I'm still is, looking for tires. Grant is still getting all the proceeds. And I looked at tires and they're, man, they're expensive. Tires are really Definitely expensive. Definitely getting some used ones. So if you want to help out Grant's military truck projects. Shameless sure. plug. Shameless plug. <laughs> All right. Now we begin the 12 hour drive back to Nebraska. But it has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for watching this video. And I think this will probably be our last farm show for a while because planting season is right around the work. corner. It's time to get back to work. So see you later. I think we should call our car the snow magnet. I cannot believe we drove the car. Every time we take this thing out now, it snows. Last time we got stuck in Millennial Farmer's driveway. Now we're getting stuck in Missouri. Semis are flipped over. This Cars are in miserable. the ditch. Yeah. Driving like 20 mile an hour. No, we're actually going nine right now. Nine? Nine miles an hour. Yeah. Quite unpleasant. We'll make it home eventually. Eventually, I hope. Doing a good job driving. Thank you. I'm just, I feel 
fortunate knowing that there's like six pickup trucks ahead of me. So if we do get stuck, I'm sure one of them can pull us out. <laughs> I assume that happened last night. I hope 